Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring is set in Middle Earth. The story tells of the Dark Lord Sauron, who seeks the One Ring, which contains part of his might to return to power. The Ring has found its way to the young hobbit Photo Baggins. The fate of Middle Earth hangs in the balance as Photo and eight companions who form the Fellowship of the Ring begin their um, excuse me their perilous journey to Mount Doom in the land of Mordor, the only place where the Ring can be destroyed. And so yeah, um, so with season two of Rings of Power coming, I believe this Friday, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I decided to watch this is actually, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually for, uh, my very first time watching uh, the Lord of the Rings movies, including The Hobbit. So, I mean, this is like me, I'm, I'm stepping into a different franchise and yeah, I don't really, I'm not a hardcore Lord of the Rings expert. I'm the same with Star Wars. Um, the only two franchises, the only two universe or franch franchise that I know every pretty much everything about is Marvel and DC. But yeah, I, I do know something some things about Star Wars too. But but yeah, I do like to step into other franchises and to you know in other territories. So it's season two of Wings of Power coming uh, this week. I decided to watch all the uh, all the the whole franchise all together. And the only exposure to Lord of the Wings that I had was um, the Lego. <laughs> it was the Lego Lord of the Wings video game. I had a fun time playing that game. Um, it was my only uh, real exposure to it. And I, but I think the game, the Lego Lord of the Wings game follows it's kind of like a compilation you know of all you know of all three movies you know all the movies of the trilogy uh wings of power uh not excuse me um the fellowship of the wing um i'm trying to think uh the two towers and the return of the king so it's like a combination of all that so that's my only real exposure i've seen a lot of people talking about Lord of the Wings. I've seen some memes. I've seen so many things about this ginormous franchise and how popular it is, and how like this move, this franchise has a ginormous ensemble list of extraordinary, talented, like A-list actors. I mean, like, here in, the, I mean, you got, like, Ian McKellen, like, well, I'm just going with the Fellowship of the Wing, uh, Ian McKellen, Liv Tyler, Viggo Mortensen, like, Kate Blanchett, like, Orlando Blue, Christopher Re Lee, Hugo Reaving, Sean Bean, Ian Holm, Andy Serkis, oh my god, <laughs> like, those are some, like, I'm like, there are a, a few... Uh, other uh, names that I'm not really familiar with and this is my first time being exposed to them um, but yeah like that's a that's a well like talented list right there so anyway uh, in this video uh, I will be breaking down um, this movie uh, I'm gonna be talking about the pros and then going into a, a couple you know a few cons uh, some flaws that I've uh, found out that I wrote in, that I wrote down. So um, yeah, like so. Let's uh, begin, shall we? So the film gives a very solid but an amazing start to the Middle Earth film, and it necessary and it nearly catches the spirited from the first Lord of the Rings novel, uh, The Fellowship of the Ring, and the film stays exactly faithful to what Middle Earth looked like in the film. Um, there are more reasons um too so that's like i didn't know about that but um i read an article um that talking about how um 
it kind of it mostly captures it's mostly accurate to the novel so and you know the film has so many talented performances given by extraordinary actors like i've mentioned in the beginning um like kate blanchett ian mckellen like christopher lee they're absolutely amazing um and many of the cats did a well done, well done job at acting uh, for what they were in the novel itself. It is very, very faithful to the novel uh, from what I heard from a lot of people from, you know, all these articles that I'm reading that, you know, people are saying that it is very, very faithful to the novel and its source materials, which is, which is good. I've never read the novel, but, you know, listening, reading all this and listening uh, to what people are saying, I, I am glad and happy about that. And the costumes and makeups on the characters are very excellent. Um, you know, it's it, it's I, I just love the costume and makeup. Uh, it's just it's very practical, well uh, well worn, and uh, yeah, it's just less uh, CGI. You know, back then. Um, there are some, and you know, there are some memorable. This movie has a lot of memorable and iconic quotes, you know, such as you know Gandalf shouting, "You, you shall not pass." Uh, not you know, not only that, but in the opening scene where Frodo uh, arrives at Gandalf, thought he was late. Uh, Gandalf replied that he is never late nor early, and tells him that he arrives precisely. Which, uh, when he means to, before the chuckle and, you know, and he laughs. In addition to the movie's performances, almost all the characters in the entire film, especially uh, the two sequels, are li very likable and memorable. Such as Frodo Baggins, you know, being a young type, you know, hobbit who, had, who was the son of Drogo Baggins, inherits the one ring from his uncle Bilbo. Um... And yeah, you know, Gandalf the Grey, you know, being, you know, this wizard and a mentor to Frodo, kind of like he gave me a lot of, you know, Gandalf gave me a lot of Merlin the Magician vibes, um, you know, Aragorn, um, you know, being a ranger and the heir to Gondor's throne, you know, tons of, there, and this movie has like tons of epic thrilling and suspenseful action sequences especially when it comes to darker scenes like the prologue scene dark riders come to look for Frodo chased by a group of orcs in the mines while managing through collapsing steps before going down the stairs below which I, I do remember uh playing it, it was a sequence that happened when I played the lego video game um, you know, playing as Frodo and, you know, all the Frodo Sam and all the, the, the characters and trying to like, um, you know, trying to evade, uh, the Dark Riders. Uh, besides the action sequence, there are many shocking and emotional scenes, such as when Gandalf falls, like, down into the abyss below after being dragged by Balrog before the Fellowship group were able to escape and even the death of Boromir near the end of the film. There are, you know, and this, that was, that was pretty, t I, like, I was thinking to myself, did Gandalf die? Like, I was like, is, I, I mean, don't spoil me, don't spoil what, you know, to me about the other sequels. I don't want to know. Uh, I don't want to know, please, <laughs> for my sake. Uh, awesome. There are some awesome and groundbreaking visual effects, like the scenery, uh, the fireworks display at the beginning, and even the town of Rivendell. The special effects still hold up to the day and raise the bar for filmmaking forever. I mean, I, I prefer, you know, practical effects, you know, visual effects compared to modern day, like today. Nowadays, everything is digital, uh, physical copies, like... I, I you know a physical copy is like going away kind of like blockbuster now everything's digital and cgi and motion capture like technology has advanced so much that we're able to do all these things in you know in the world in, you know in you know american hollywood cinema you know but it, and you know sometimes it will work and sometimes it looks good and sometimes it doesn't look good kind of like the recent mcu films uh, and TV shows, uh, for example, you know, for example, 
Um, so yeah, and Peter Jackson, who was a director um, of the previous horror movies uh, in the 1990s before this film, which I didn't know after, I, but I looked it out and I was like, oh, well, that's an interesting uh, fact, you know, an interesting detail to mention. Uh, he gives a very stunning and a nice direction and he follows, um, you know, the the plot of the fellowship, you know, from the novel very perfectly and the other uh, Middle Earth stories. The scene where Gandalf created many different kinds of fireworks at night during Bilbo's 111th uh, birthday, especially the fire dragon, is a very fun, nice uh, watch and very beautiful and majestic. The soundtrack that was performed by Howard Shore, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, is a is incredibly epic and just cathedral <laughs> cathedral um which he did a fantastic job to fit the tone of the movie there are some very beautiful cinematography um as the cinematography itself fits the middle earth movies pretty well especially with the hobbit trilogy and the extended cut of the movie which i which was the cut that i watched uh, which, you know, which I watched and I bought, especially with the other movies, are even better. And it adds more details uh, that of the novel that was never shown in a theatrical cut, especially Gandalf. Especially when Gandalf reveals to reveals Gollum's real name to Frodo, sealing up a plot hole in the next film. Which is something you might not know if you aren't a fan, you know, if you haven't read the novel or, you know, aren't, or, you know, a beginner kind of like me. So, yeah. Like I said, there is a plot hole in the theatrical cut that, the that you know, Gandalf didn't actually reveal Gollum's real name to Frodo. But, you know, be, like I said, the extended cut did solve it and, and you know, did clarify that. Um... You know, it does feature a gross, I mean, it's not really a flaw, but more like a, more like a nitpick. Um, it features a gross scene where the orcs are being created from mud, which is inaccurate to the book. But like I said, it, it's a nitpick that I found, uh, that that I, I found from reading an article, but it's, it, it's nothing. It's not, it, you know, it's just a little bug it's just a little gnat it's just whatever um you know i even though i i thought that i didn't know that was Liv tyler but um her performance was rather minimal uh and she didn't get much to do in the movie but i i, I really don't care like like i said these flaws aren't really flaws they're like kind of tiny little bugs is what they are and there's just not really much so you know the film would later go on and become one of the best fantasy films ever made from critics audience moviegoers and fans from the from the novel from the books um and you know people are praising the hell out of this movie and it it definitely holds up. It definitely holds up. I just Jesus Christ! Like I watched this movie and I noticed a lot of similarities, some scenes and sequences from the Lego video game. And like it's all coming back to me. I'm like, yo, I I recognize this scene. I I remembered it from the game. So yeah, kind of yeah. That, you know, the Lego game is, it, it's a pretty fun game. Um, but yeah, it's, I, for me, I played the game before I watched the movies. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say with uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for taking time to listening to my review, my thoughts. Uh, please like and subscribe. Definitely subscribe because when you subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, you'll be helping me out by a bunch and you would be part of my community and me and my community we you know when you join us we're kind of you know we're like a huge family and we would definitely welcome you 
um, I would definitely welcome you into our community, into our uh, environment. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.